this, uh, sort of discovered this for himself when he started cutting hair. I think it was like 15 or something. He did his mates, and these are all guys who were into pucks, right? And mohawks, yeah. And what he would do is he would grab a clipper. And one guy said, "Yeah, I want a mohawk." Then he grabbed the clipper and he just went like this. He thought, "I'll just pull to the back." And what happened was that the mohawk was nice and wide in the front, but this like small, you know, like thin in the in the back because he just pulled straight back and of course the head goes round so the clipper follows the head and that's where it goes in. So that for him sort of said click there, it's like oh wait, you know, the head goes round so I have to, you know, think about this. And that's the reason why this is in essence just a straight party. It's only it looks like it's curved because the head goes round. And that's pretty much it. There is one little thing though that I did here. Um, that if the hair would be longer all over, I would do slightly different. It's very minimal in this case, very minimal. I'll try to keep that to the bare minimum as well. Is that this uh, side is slightly higher than what I would normally do. But when I'm setting in my baseline, so I'm going to determine the length of, the, of these heads, instead of going at that 90 degree, I'm not going to dip ever so slightly. Because normally, let's say for instance, we have his hair, I know you're filming, but let's say we have his hair and we'll put a baseline in here. I will put the baseline at the right height, you know, make sure that it's correctly uh, positioned, and then I will pick up his hair at a 90 degree angle, just full on straight. In his case, I'm going to say, just, look, just compensate for the fact that I went just a slight bit higher with the baseline itself. Now, determining the length of the baseline is down to yourself, yeah? That's pure professional insight. There's no rule for that. There is a general sort of, you know, direction you can go in. Is that when you have a razor fade, for instance, everybody knows what a razor fade is? Yeah. Like really on the skin, you don't take a baseline that's this long. If you have a longer trim, like my hair, you don't get a baseline this short. I mean, that's, you know, and everything in between is all down to you. Because that's a question that a lot of people who don't cut hair ask when they start learning. It's like, yeah, I do it turn that length. Shit, you've got two extremes and everything in between is just up to you. It's all down to your own sort of insight. So I'm going to do that. Grab my comb, grab my clipper, pick this up, and comb all the hair up. And I'm going to start above the ear. Why am I starting above the ear? That's the widest point of the head. Everybody. Is this around this area, widest point of the head. So I'm going to start there because that's where I determine my length. And determine the squares of the haircut as well. Pick it up. Now, normally, as I said, I'll go up 90 degrees, but because this baseline is slightly bit higher, I'm going to just keep it a little lower. As you can see, I'm keeping my comb straight. I'm just running my clipper past it. It's going to go to the front. I'm going to follow the head around in the front just yeah, a slightly as well, which means that my comb goes straight and I go in ever so slightly. Only for these types of haircuts. If you have really longer trims, you can go straight forward. But when it gets a bit shorter, going in ever so slightly just helps with a little bit of heaviness here. And I'm going to follow through to the back and pick it up again. And as you can see, I'm holding my comb straight yeah only in the back here where the head goes into the neck is where i'm going to create a slight tilt why because that's all down to that head area going into that neck area pretty much it that's why here is where i slightly tilt inward but also again subtly and i'm just gonna comb through again and just clean up, have a quick last check of everything, make sure everything is nice and clean. Yeah. Okay, now this can be short, so I'm going to set in straight away. Now, this for who of you is also a hairdresser? I know you're probably a hairdresser. Women as well? Yes. Have you ever done women as well, as in female haircuts? No, okay. You have. You have, you have, also, cool. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to set my comb diagonally, like this. I'm going to find my baseline and work from that and put my comb on the skin. But all the way down here where the ear connects to the head and the top. 
you can skip it or you can put an extra step in between going straight down the length of the skin. In this case, I know it's going to be short. This way of working is not too different from grabbing it between your fingers and cutting it with the scissors. The only thing is, these are your fingers and these are more scissors, pretty much. Because this is, uh, I don't even know how many teeth this has, but this is pretty much just a line of scissors with an electrical engine attached. It's not, it's not really any different. So I'm going to set in, find my baseline, which is over here. I'm just going to take it all off. We'll come back later to that front and clean that up. All the way through. Just. And why do we work? in a diagonal motion. If you work too vertically, you keep losing your connection from the last bit you've done. If you work too horizontally, it is possible, especially when you have a bit more of a, you know, a bit more experience in you know, what you're doing. Um, but you do run a risk of creating a stair, you know, like a staircase, which is, of course, not something we want. So I'm just going to cross it. Thank you. Just going to cross it. it takes me fitness out. This is still a sketch phase, so there's not too much I'm going to do to this yet, but I do want to make sure that this sketch is clean at the very least. There we go. I'm going to clean up the side here a bit more. Let's get those last few hairs out. This is not of any importance because I can use a glitter guard to get this away as well. I prefer a bit of a cleaner canvas. Most of the time, it just works a bit nicer. So you mentioned that everything is clean. You only use one scissor size, right? Uh, you mean one of the guard sizes? You mean yeah. this? Ah, yes. uh, depends on the haircut. Really depends on the haircut. There are different ways. There are different ways of doing this. There are different ways of doing this. Nice and clean around the ears as well. Now I'm not going to do the contours yet. That's one of the last things I want to do. Duncan, when, uh, when, when this client, you know, when he requests an executive contour, yes. um, is there any numbering? You know, someone might come into an American shop and say, I'd like to see skin or no skin. Yeah, and typically it's indicative of numbers, right? You'd say, okay, a one is skin. If You'll see guy, some skin. If a guy who says to me, yeah, I want a number three over here and a number six over here. And I just <laughs> look at him and I go like, I have no fucking clue what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> and he sort of looks at me like, I said, do you want it on the skin or not? Yeah. You know, is do you want to cover? Do you want skin? Do you want to do a razor? And they'll say, oh, you know, I'll have a razor. And I'll be like, okay, and then I know what length. Do you want it really high or not too high? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Like, with the whole numbers, I know it's information that some clients like to use, but it doesn't work for a head. You know, every head yeah. is different, every hair is different. So I just look at the head, I look at the hair, I think like, okay, if I'm going to do a razor fade on this guy, I have to go out to this area, see what the skin does, see what the scalp does. I would just work like that. Yeah. So, you know, that's honestly my answer when guys go like, yeah, I want this number here. This I'm just like, what? I think I find myself asking more about skin than yeah, lengths. But for their benefit, because every guy... Vague to clients, but actually it isn't really vague because it gives you more room to maneuver. Yeah. And that's what you want in the end. It just seems like every guy at some point is going to stumble into, you know, sort of that easy super cuts sort of thing. And if you give them a general idea, right, maybe they can... Yeah, and after a while, especially when guys come to your barbershop a bit more, they will also know that you do the, you know, you can, they can say, oh, can I have it like last time? If you cut a lot of guys, guys say, oh, we do, oh, we did this and this and this. Fair enough, we'll go for that. Yeah. This one... Yeah. Right. So in this case, you've already consulted with him, and yeah, he. I had a little bit of a chat with him. Yeah. I just don't. I don't go in. If it's somebody I would know really well, like close personal friend, I would just even without talking just go and cut. And I used to have a client back in the old shop who used to work um, that could just sit down, and I would just cut. And this Start going. Day, I was just went and I cut him, and we were halfway, and he sort of looked up and he said. Did we actually discuss what I wanted? I was like, <laughs> oh shit, no, we forgot that. He said, but you know what, you know, like, I uh, say it like every time, right? He said, yeah, just like we usually do. And that was kind of funny because we sort of realized that we got to this position where you start to know each other so well as a barber or customer that you can just, you know, go. Yeah. And that's, to me, that's cool. That's cool. If you can do that. To me, that's pretty much what barbering or hairdressing 
it's about you create this bond with people. And that's quite what I like about this trade as well. Um, I've only been doing this for three years. I used to be a graphic designer. And due to business going bankrupt and everything, I had to look for a different job. So I came into cutting hair without actually knowing what it was going to be like and if I was going to like it. But the social part of it, apart from the fact that you can be really sort of neurotically precise and you know, get the whole shape right and everything, the whole social part of it really spoke to me. I was like, ah, you know, you talk to different people every day about different stories and things and experiences. And that, to me, that's, yeah, I don't know, that was, that was cool. Loved it. Now, this side will be a bit more forgiving than the other side when it comes to that baseline again. So, go in. It's too long. No, it's not too long. It's very stubborn. It wants to fall back every single time. It's heavy, yeah? Exactly. There we go. Now, front of the ear is pretty much horizontal. And once you get behind that part of the ear, it's where the head starts going and as you can see I'm not making that curve or dip myself, I'm just following the shape of the head, making sure that I don't dip or anything. Because that is something that a lot of people do, is they will curve down by themselves like this. And what happens there is that you lose a connection to the back when you try to connect the top to the back, to the side area. Such a rock wire sometimes. The Jack Russell syndrome. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the same oh, somebody's whistling. I have that one too. A bit of, a bit of bark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't stay for our for our size. <laughs> Everything's good. Everything's fine. It's telling Duncan earlier. I'm glad his dog is here because it makes me feel like at home. Bring well, uh, Rob used to bring Paco quite a lot, but Paco's starting to age and uh, he's not as mobile anymore. He's fartier than he used to be, though. He's uh, just, like Rob. Yeah, just like Rob. Just yeah. <laughs> like Rob, comes, yeah. Comes with the age. Well. <laughs> Come with the age. No, but it's uh, Paco's been, he's, he's a big sort of uh, company bear, actually. Oh. You know, so it's, it's, it's really, but it's good to have, have a dog in the shop. I know in the States, uh, this is more out everywhere. Mostly in the chains. Yeah. Like, oh, 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 over here, of course, you can't have people that, that don't like dogs. And they don't want to have that in your shop, and a lot of people don't come to your shop because you have a dog. But I was like, yeah, it's a small dog, we can put him in the back. We, have, we, have, we have even have, have a fence so we can stay in the back. But I think nobody is buying a dog today, right? Nope. Right? I think everybody's okay with the dog, yeah. <laughs> We're fully booked for the week. Nice. And I got a really good bottle for Friday for you guys. Who's, uh, who's on Friday? Carl. Oh, nice. Best. Yeah. Best there. Yeah, Great beer. Yeah. Great model. So it looks nice to get a nice beer. That's a great beer. We always try to get, like, people Especially with hair models, these yeah. three, uh, three days. Yeah, you never, you never, you're not. I'm percent sure you always ask the guy, yeah, you have good hair. Last week we had like a guy like Rob friend with six hairs. Then we got somebody else from the street because yeah, you don't want to have that. But... I actually asked the guy, yeah, yeah, his I friend who booked for him, does your friend have good hair? He's like, yeah, he's got good hair. And he came in, it was peroxide blonde and he had like uh, the gaps in the front that were oh. huge and it was this short on the side, this short on top. And I sort of looked and was like, how the fuck is this good hair? What do you do? Yeah, so don't leave that up to... Uh... I would kill for that hair, but... Yeah, true. 
It's sort of like, as a barber, sometimes you have to tell a guy that he's a little more bald than he actually thinks he is. Yeah. Look, I, I had a guy, he came in, he said, yeah, I let it grow a little bit. A little off the top. What can you, what can you still do for me? I said, I said, oh, let's do it one day, you know? It's that time. And then I did that, and yeah, he was really a little bit insecure still, you know? And then after a few weeks, he came back, and he was my man. That's the best thing ever. Yeah. What a great idea, yeah. It's just you need to get past that point, I think. At some point, you just need to realize Yeah, I never had that point. I, yeah, of course. I, as a address, I was like, shaving. Look, I, I hate the disconnection in the barber world these days. Or not hate, you know, that's new school. But with old school barbering, you, you want to have a fade in there. You want to have a connection. But back in the days, I was just shaving my sides, bleaching the top, and then bleaching because the top was getting thinner, you know, like putting some matte clay in there. so. It, makes it a little bit more and then at one day you were like yeah no it's not gonna work anymore just shave it off and i have to say it, it did pretty good i think uh i got you, you got uh people are gonna react a little bit different on you when you, uh, when you go from to bold you know uh, you look a little bit more aggressive or whatever i don't know what it's it is yeah. so people are are but that will make it grow out more natural as well so it will look good for a longer period of time. Okay. Then again, of course, of course you want to have your clients back, but I love to have, like this guy, you know, it was pretty long, but when, uh, as he walked in, if I would clean up his lines and just fade out the last bit of neck, he would have a longer trim of what he had before. And that's what we want to have, because we want to have a, a haircut that's good for, for not only the first for a period of time, right? Minute, but that's only good for a longer period of time, and it has to be easy to do by himself. Because today I will cut it, we will blow dry it, we will cut it, but we will respect the nature full. So tomorrow when he wakes up, it will be in the same place. So that's what, if you bow your head forward, that's what this is, that's what I've done here. What I've done here, we have that crown area over here, and I'm working from that curve to make sure that his hair will sit in this parting naturally. Because that is the thing, especially with the stronger uh, crown areas, you need to do that. There is, or if the hair is really long, you can avoid it, but, um, or you can just, you know, make it all long and slick it back, that's all fine, but in this case, you need to work with this cowlick. That's just the way it is, and that's the way his hair is going to sit. And this natural fall also makes it easier for him. See, this is the reason why, because this wants to jump up. But with a little bit of product, I can get this back now. So that's why it's slightly like this, but this needs to be short real close. So everything, everything in the end has a reason uh, for it, the way it sits. Let me get that shape in just a little bit, see what it wants to do. Slight, slight, slight wave that I might be able to put in here in the end. That'd be nice. But first we'll start to connect up. Again, the baseline, which means I'm going to start above the ear. So I'm going to start above this area again to determine that squareness, and I'm going to pick this up. Now, I'm going to pick this up to the baseline, yes? Yeah? So I'm not going to pick this up at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to pick this up to the baseline. The baseline is here. That baseline is, in this case, again, not fully 90 degrees because of the shortness of the hair on the sides, but that's my baseline. Yeah? I'm not pulling the hair, I'm just holding the hair. That's why I come from underneath and I just hold. I don't pull or anything. And then, small cuts. And just move to the back as you can see like I did with my baseline when I set in with the clippers I start above the ear I move to the front and then I go to the back so I clean up this area and I use the same structure for every single client every single haircut I always start with my baseline no clipper then go in 
sideways, also determining length depending on the haircut he wants. Then I'll go to the top, do the same thing, the front, and then to the back to the V shape, and continue on from there. And I do every client the same way, whatever the haircut, always the same structure. So this is ultimately you removing the bulk. This is all bulk removal. Right. That's why it's still wet. Before we get into detailed work. Yes, because detail work is dry hair for us. And I'll show you that in a minute when we get to that point. Now for his head, are you going to get tighter on the sides or are you as tight as you plan to be? Uh, depending on. I'll see what the hair does when it's dry. I do tend to, I do prefer to make it a bit of a softer finish, but we'll see what happens. I don't like to force myself in too much of a position at first. Now what I'm going to do here, because this side I have now connected to that baseline. Yeah, it is jumpy hair, so I have left slight bit of length here so that it is stylable without it just jumping up all the time. Now this side I'm going to go what we normally would do for a symmetrical haircut is go from ear to ear over the top of the head split come this all over and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do the same connection as I did on the other side. And why shears versus clipper over comb? Because we're a barber. Yeah. That's it. I think that's the, the biggest reason, yeah? We, uh, we even have a shirt weapon of choice. You have like skeleton hand, you know, like even after that, we're still holding that clipper. You know, we try to do everything by uh, mostly like shape it up like the, the, the sketch with the clipper, yeah? So you get. And I think uh, we're going to show you over the next two, two day, uh, three days as well, is that even with a longer trim and stuff, a clipper can really have like something over cutting with, with shears between the fingers. Um, look, and you know, we come from a hairdressing background, so sometimes you cross check still like between your fingers or whatever. Well, we're going to show you, especially also with the top, if you put stuff between your fingers, you're mostly over directing. So you're getting, getting a concave line, uh, how even secure you do, like, the, you know, like, uh, with Fido Sazoon and everything, like, or, what's that? Yeah, <laughs> precision you know, parts. Precision, like, the really, you know, like, in this, this already, like, 10 precision parts, you know, it will take a lot of time. And I think you can save a lot of time when you're working with, with your clippers, getting that shape in there, and then you have a lot of uh, time left when we start cutting with shears after the blow drying and then after the blow drying uh, because we when the blow drying I tr uh, we try to respect the natural fall as well by blow drying the roots over skin blow drying the roots first so the hair can find its own way and then you put the shape in there and then we cut it from the shape because then you can exactly see what the hair is doing in wet hair that's the basic in wet hair you will lose a lot of um, details weight uh, you know, the, the natural fall, it will, it will disappear. So we, we leave a lot till after the blow dry because that's where you can find all the, all, the, all, the, all the little details where you can change a lot, where you can find the way, where you can find like, the, the, how short you can go without jumping, stuff like that. So what I'm going to do now, I've done the side. I've connected this back area, I've connected the entire side over here to the back. Now there are two ways of getting this sort of almost like a fringe area to connect up. We always over direct this, we always disconnect this. My hair as well 
Uh, I think my front lamp goes to about here right now. And if you comb it out down the middle, I would have a bob line, in essence, because my hair in the back is about this. So as you can see, it's like a short bob, which is when you think about it. Yeah, but when you think about it, when guys see pompadours, they only think like James Dean and Elvis and Elvis, manly haircut. It's just a bob line. So, um, all jokes aside, it's the front we leave disconnected. Now, there are two ways of doing this. I can grab this up from here and start between my fingers and then over direct from here to here. You can also cut this freehand, depending on the hair type we're dealing with. And just, uh, it just depends on the hair, it really depends on the hair. We had a student once who saw Rob do that, you know, free hand cut from here to here. And he was one of our regular students who we teach to not be able to cut hair, to be able to be a sort of a independent barber. And he just went in and he cut a line, a short line in here, a whole line <laughs> oh in the no. short side. We faded that out in the end, yes. but I told him, like, look, when you have a bit more experience, all lifted up, you know, stuff like that. But don't get too overzealous with the, with the techniques. I did that in school. It happens. It happens. No idea. Sorry, man. Also do between fingers. Yes, yeah, that's also possible. It, it depends. It really depends on the hair. It depends on the hair. Because sometimes when a guy has like wavy hair texture, like I have, for instance, I would do between the fingers. But he has nice straight hair, so when you comb it down, it just sits. And you can just, without forcing it, you can just cut. Don't drop it. They're a bit too expensive to drop. And it's weird, right? Because these are probably the most expensive scissors I have, and this is the only thing I use them for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty much, when you think about it, it's a bit weird. But you know, it's always nice. It's always nice. So, that done. Who is familiar with this? Yes. Anybody else use the grooming tonic? Does anybody of you know the Suavecito grooming spray? as a brand. No. We, we use you know, Suavecito okay, in ours. It's, it's pretty much the same, or it's not exactly the same because this is not yeah. a spray, yeah. but it, it does firm up the hair a little bit more. Okay. In French, you guys, you guys from Switzerland, in French it says mise en pli on here, and maybe for some of the hairdressers mise en pli will be a familiar term as well. You know when the ladies get the rollers in and underneath the, uh, underneath the drying cap? You know, like the, the, the big egg-shaped thing that goes over the head? Um, they will put a similar, a similar product in back in the days, and this is pretty much what it is. I used to really, back in the old shop where I used to work at, I used to hate this. Because I thought it was the same as this, the blue one, and I would put this in my spray bottle. And after a while, the floor would be all slippery, and I was like, what the fuck is this stuff? <laughs> Until I started working here, and I realized what we use it for, and it's absolutely brilliant. It really does the trick. So I take a good amount, I spread it out with the hands, First, I work the side parting, really going from the root area into a little bit of the length, really making sure I get that entire root area. Maybe. And what's your general goal with this, Duncan? Hmm? What's your general goal with this as far as this stuff progressing I use, with the haircut? I used before blow drying. Okay. This I'll use it because what it does when I blow dry this, the hair with this in it, it will um, it will firm up the hair a little bit. It will like give it some rigidity. Okay. Well, it's not even comparable to a mousse. It's uh, I can't believe there are maybe salt spray stuff like that. You know, it just makes it firmer and a little bit more gives it more rigidity actually. Is it? It's it's. I don't. I hate to say dirty hair, but like yeah, that halfway yeah, point in your day. Does, right? It can have that feel when you. As a man, brush. you can always tell like the difference between. When we blow dry this. Is for the next step. really long hair, really long hair, and he loves that stuff. Yeah, that it, it, it's it's quite, it's quite it just smooths it out for him. No fun, another funny anecdote, there's a French guy who uses the Rosal products, and he sells this, 
to all the ladies who are about 60, 70 plus. Mm -hmm. They use it a lot. Why? Because they Set can the do rollers. their they can do their waves and rollers, but it makes them smell, according to them, like younger men, which they like. <laughs> now, it's that smell that sort of reminds them of back in the day. You know, which is, and that's, for him, that's in France, that's his best-selling product there. Yeah. Because all the old ladies buy tons of the stuff. You know, I uh, work in a college town, but there's a lot of older locals, and they um, myself and another barber sells Ruzel and they really love it because a it lot of them will smell. Them. Yeah. Like uh, there's the a smells. funny, I'll tell you this later about the green one. It's sort of a, a good, a good uh, story behind that as well. So, blow dry. We always prefer blow dry as the heat's nice, but we prefer the power over heat to be really fair. You need a blow dry that can blow, that can blow properly. That's as simple as it is. So, the first thing we're going to do this is going to be a bit loud and I hate shouting over blow dry, so I'm going to explain this in, uh, in advance. I'm going to hold the hair here with my hands and I'm going to blow dry that area of the part. And I'm going to hold this and I'm going to blow dry that area of the part, and depending on the switch around, it doesn't really matter as long as that part is blow dry in. Okay? because I want to go from the roots, yeah, and dry the roots first. try to do but of course sometimes you get guys that mm -hmm. do have blow dryer at home that do use a blow dryer to do their hair especially guys with particular types of haircuts you know guys who like the big palms or stuff like that they're all even the guys that are a bit more vain in that sense they just, uh, yeah, use blow dryer because they find that it improves the styling in the end hey, okay. fair play you know uh, bonus points to you for doing that because uh, there is still the stigma, like uh, what we talked about this morning, about being a uh, man in the hairdressing business like 10, 20 years ago with the whole gay thing. It's the same with blow dryers still for some guys. They will be like, ah, I don't know, blow this for women. And I always tell them, like, look, mate, you know, because uh, especially when guys ask me, like, yeah, how do you do your hair the way you do it? I say, hey, shit, I use a blow dryer. Why? Because it gets the shaping right. Thank you. 
angle tips, but I just prefer them straight because every time now you have to turn around and whatnot, which is not for me. It's not for me. <laughs> I'm picking up the hair as well as it's getting dry and the grooming tonic is now doing its job because that will make it a bit easier to blend cut in the end once I get to that point that I'm going to blend cut it. So are you looking for complete dryness or do you leave it a little bit damp? Complete dryness. Completely. Yeah, because uh, what I said before, heat heading, weight, stop, uh, you know, a crop, uh, jumping up crown areas, cow legs, stuff like that will disappear when it's wet. So you really need to dry completely and then uh, we're going to, yeah, when we come show you how we use uh, our shield so. to dry. Um, Blending scissors, Blending. don't call them thinning scissors, especially not tomorrow because Rob will get violent. <laughs> so, um, these are what we call blending scissors. We blend with these, we don't thin out. We never thin out here actually. And those and are the ones out. that you never use in wet hair because it's yeah. detailing shears. It's detailing. And details you don't see in wet So what we have here is that the hair is dry and I'm going to sort of detail it. And that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to pick this hair up and start in front and determine the length that I want. As you can see the hair falls this way, yeah, that's why I'm standing here, so the hair falls into the comb a bit easier. I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to angle it, and I'm going to start cutting out. as you can see, as it falls through the comb, it is short enough. I'm taking my first section, which is almost sort of the front area of the hair, and I'm going to do that in about four or five parts, where I pick it up and I start blending, coming all back. I'm go to my second area, find the connection I did in front. See, I keep cutting with these scissors until I get that blunt line again. Just making sure all the hair is cut away. And this is why we call them detailing scissors because what I'm doing now is I'm cutting in shape into this hair, into the dry hair, is where I'm getting that shape in. If you look at the, you see the gold frame up here? Mm -hmm. All the way down, down, the, down to the right, yeah? 
that guy in the front, probably his hair in the front is longer than my hair in the front. I think it's about, probably about this. And then the back is probably only about this in length. So you get a really extreme shape and that's what we like to go for. If you get like slick backs, we do it straight. If you get your pons, we do it with stuff like that. We try to angle it down to a sloping, uh, to a sloping shape. Do you all ever get like a traditional dude in here that's just like two on the sides, finger length on top? Would people ever pop in here for that? Yeah, but they get the same response I usually give. Just like, what? No, but it's, um, <laughs> no, we just uh, explain to him what we do and uh, we get him, we give him that traditional look always. Okay. Always. We like it when the older guys with the gray hair come in and when it's a full head of hair, it's just, you know, it can make yeah. it look so cool. And some of the guys actually reminds them of even their grandfathers. You know, they're like, oh, you know, with all the greasy yeah, yeah. aftershaves and everything, the smells and the talcum powder. Do you ever have a client that's like, oh, no, thanks, and leaves? <laughs> they don't want to. Yep, we do. Uh, back in the day when they just switched up the shop, uh, neighbors had this situation, I think, once, where a guy who uh, they cut for a longer time had half long hair. Of course, they were only doing the classics from that point on. He came in, he sat there waiting for two hours or something, and he came into the chair and he just wanted to take the, the alcohol's tips off, you know, it's clean up. And then the neighbors have to tell him, like, look, you don't do that anymore. So he left after two hours of waiting. Oh yeah, it's a shame. That's a really big risk when you go into a new sort of business model, of course. And we've had a model here as well, Australian guy, really had lovely, like, long, blonde, thick, you know, wavy hair. And he came in here and he said, oh yeah, the old haircut model, uh, he called in for it. He sat down and said, yeah, I just want to take the tips off. So I sort of looked at him like, fuck, yeah, really? And I looked at him and I was like, look, do you see what we do here? And then you know, pointed at that old pictures on the wall. So I looked at like, you're a haircut model, yeah? For ups and distance, so, yeah? So do you understand what we have to do to your hair? So I looked. And he actually got kind of aggravated about it. I was like, dude, you're not the one supposed to be aggravated. We're trying to make, get models here for everybody. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you know where you're at. No, it's, it's sometimes it happens. Also on the other side, people not knowing what we do. And then they come in and they want something like super modern or an undercut or, I don't know, coloring, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's just not what, we, it's not what we do. And you have to explain that to people, which is okay, you know, most guys are pretty chill with it, they uh, are quite relaxed, and they, if you give them a good explanation, like neighbors explain, it's fine, you know, it's, it's not a big deal, but you have to give them that explanation. And here at the back is where I'm going to round it off, just to get that shape correct. So will you use your straight shear on the top much for this haircut or at all? Only to remove bulk. Yeah, just if the bulk. The guy has double the length for what he wants because he hasn't been here for like six months. Mm -hmm. um, I will wet it and I will pick it up all to the middle like a mohawk between the fingers. Just and take just off cut what you need. A little less than I want to take off. If yeah. I have to take half off, I'll take uh, off a little less than a half. Okay. So I have room to cut more off with these in the end. That's kind of the idea. Okay. That's when we use our regular scissors uh, on top. Finish this up. So while I'm rounding this off, there is also a picture on the wall, which I'll point out in a second, which is in a silver frame, and it's underneath, I think, a blue poster, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. You see weird. that that back area is rounded off in full, yeah? That's what we try to go for in the back. If you have a brand like American Crew, for instance, what they do um, also very nicely, they tend to keep the back square. That's fine, you know, that's an aesthetics choice, which is all good. For us personally, that's a bit too heavy in some haircuts. So what we tend to do is we tend to round it off a bit more. Coming down to a little bit more detailing here. Grab all this. Coming into here, some thickness. 
Duncan, would you explain the square back versus round to me a little it's bit just, more? It's just uh, how bulky you want it. Uh, okay. This is bulky. We, prefer, we keep everything square from here, from this angle around the ear, but we do round the back off because you just think that I've... Oh, you're, you're talking about that. The nice yeah, degree. Yeah. Right, okay. Because everything behind the ear you can, in a, in a sense, it's more square on the side than that. Keep it square around the ear so it looks square all over. I understand that. I found the unit square on a lot of my clients and it just grow out weird. It was an odd when they would come back in. Yeah, you mean in the back or around yeah, the ears? Yeah, in the back. Yeah, fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, it can get really bulky really quickly. So what we tend to do is we uh, tend to round that off a little bit more so it just flows nicer. And especially when you get the guys with the longer trim haircuts and you're doing um, you're doing that, that roundness in the back, it makes it easier to get that taper fade in as well where you can really work it into this really from super long length to really short. It's amazing, you know, how lovely that is that they do that. Show them with the Daniel. Yeah. Show them with the Daniel. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm still waiting on my uh, Mustang blending shoes. But we, uh, we tend to use these scissors the most, I think, out of all the... Uh, do they have you guys test them out before they... Uh, yes, as well, but the go, owners test Go to market? Them. Yeah, the owners test them as well. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, Sort of a sponsorship combination deal that we have with them it's really you know it's just really genuinely nice to work with a brand like that because they make really nice quality uh, uh quality material yeah i'm my co-worker what brand uh Mr. 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 Tani. Japanese mostly actually the good scissors. I mean of course you have the crap brands on the market with everything. But yeah, I know uh, uh, yeah, you have a shop for Facebook also very nice. Which are you doing on with Okay, which one do you have? I have Hatori, the spinning shears, blending shears, and then uh Kamasori regular shears. The Hatori ones I chose they're wider yeah, because the, of the university, there's a lot of ethnic hair. So I do everything from white, Asian, oh, black, okay. everything. Yeah. It is cool, it makes it interesting to <laughs> well, we, we don't do a lot of black hair here. Sometimes we get people in. We had a few weeks ago, we had one of our students who booked somebody for a flat top haircut, but he hadn't seen his model yet. So the guy comes in and he had black hair. And Victor looked at me like, Oh shit, he never done that before. <laughs> so he went in, uh, flipper over comb on the side. He's like, dude, don't. And he looked at me, what do you mean, don't? I said, yeah, I comb, the comb it out, like really comb it out, and just flip it on the garden and sculpt it, shape mm -hmm. it. So he started doing that, and this poor guy, I mean, he was really trying, he was sweating and everything. He <laughs> was flustered and all that. In the end, he ended up doing the haircut, but. It's just the showing yeah, that black hair is a completely different game mm -hmm. to play. It's beautiful oh, hair. Oh, it's yes. absolutely beautiful hair. You can do really it cool things with it. It takes practice. It takes practice, yes. Just like anything else. If you had a temple for it, that's really nerve wracking. But it's fun to let them struggle sometimes. Do you remember, of course, I'm going to watch them struggle? <laughs> no, the worst thing I like to do to the students is to walk by and when they're working and walk by and go like, are you going to do anything about that, you know, that area that you went in and you was there? And you see the guy in the chair going like, what the fuck is this? You go like, oh, where am I? You need the old man in you, it's beautiful. It's very, it's harsh, but it's beautiful. It keeps them on the toes. Yeah, what's with the bald spot on the neck? Yeah, oh man. 
I like to ask, is that too much blood? There's no blood, it wasn't short enough. Yeah, they also panic when they, uh, when students, when they cut into the ears. Because ears, the clients don't really feel it, but they keep bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. So it's also, uh, it's one of those things. We razor around the edges, and when I, when I started, I hit a guy's ear pretty, yeah. pretty cleanly. It, it, and he's like, something warms on my ear over here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's like, I was like, fuck. <laughs> well, I, I did a demo once with a, with a radio wave. And I was happy with the whole haircut. And then the last bit, I'm going to do a radio wave. And then after a minute or so, everything started bleeding. Like, <laughs> everywhere you saw a spot. And it was a pretty high fade. It happens. Look, I stretch the skin. I prepare the skin really good. Sometimes you have that skin that's fried in you are much funnier and easy going and lovable with alcohol. Definitely, definitely. Give him a few rum coats and I'm good to go. Or just blame it on their genetics. Be like, you have weak skin. Weak skin, yeah. It's a thing. It's a real thing. Yeah, I did a radio fade and then it started bleeding. After a minute, everything started bleeding in the dental. I didn't cut it, but it was all, all dots. Little dots. You know, I had, but like a lot. <laughs> but you were like, okay, guys, don't put it on Instagram. No, no. Yeah. It happens. So, uh, just explain one little thing because I'm doing a slight bit of yeah. fading now. This clipper is from Valve, yeah? I've got this guard on, which is a number one, which close is three millimeters. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it in the classical uh, imperial Yankee thing, but you know, get used to it. That's fine. Um, no, so three millimeters closed, four and a half open. Now, Val, being the company out there, thought about these things because this cone is also from Val. This cone connects to this clipper guard open, which means that the back of this cone is about four and a half millimeters, just like this clipper guard, the number one open, which means that this one will always connect to this one. That's as simple as it is. You know, they, that's, that's cool. They, they also try, even if you use a different brand, you use Oster or Parasonic or, you know, whatever. Um, no, I'm just to that one. Uh, try to learn what your material does, you know. Just try to memorize, like, okay, you know, I know that this length connects to this. If you know your tools, you can't really go wrong. Well, you can still go wrong if you really have a bad day, but you know what, right? Just know your tools. Hey, uh, what, 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 Als jij dat kan doen, uh, tien uur staat hij erop voor. Dan kom ik zie jou wel een mooie handel. En duw van de Ja, dat wilde ze ook toch? Ja, ze hebben de vorige, volgende week op gezegd, oh flat op, flat op, zat op, zat op. Wie heb je geregeld dan? Ja, uh, gasten jij ooit al gezegd, uh, die ook op internet had gereageerd. Oh nice. They need to be good, but for me, that's always a boring part. <laughs> I prefer the longer trims, uh, you know, with the longer sides, a little bit of a taper. That to me is just, <coughs> just, just has my preference. Bless you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Jeff. Hello. 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 Dutch or? Gezondheid. Gezondheid is more German. Yeah. Yeah. Gezondheid. 
So it's almost the same? Yeah. yeah. But if an American said it, you'd be like, nice work. Ah, <laughs> we don't, we don't, you know. Uh, now look, like I said before, if anybody speaks any other languages from any other countries, I respect that because yeah. it's not easy. It's not easy. Now, so if, if an American says to me, uh, uh, Gesundheit, that's fine. I could say three or four very shitty things in different languages. Yeah. Fair I could say like, where's the bathroom in Thai? Or ask where the bathroom is. That would yeah. be my priority in Thailand. But okay. Like, hello, you know, in Thailand, thank you. I always try and learn thank you if I can. I don't think I say thank you in Dutch very well. Don't you, Val? That's very good, yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Probably better, more well-spoken than most Dutch people. <laughs> No, the first thing I try to Don't learn them. in most languages is Don't to ask them where the alcohol is. <laughs> so Thai is an interesting language, I guess, because um, it's all about inflection, right? You could use the same word, like na and na, or yeah. sort of like one's dog, one's horse. But it's 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 very, uh, what surprised me in Thailand, it says very, you know, it's very sort of nasal and everything. It's fine, but it's just, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's, it, it kind of caught me off guard. There's a lot of that, right? I learned a tiny bit of Tagali, which is Filipino. Tagali? Big fish canneries. In the fish canneries, not so I've fast. never even heard of Tagali. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. You're not supposed to call it Filipino. It's Tagali. It but sounds you really, like... you worked in a, in a cannery in Alaska. Mm -hmm. It was pretty hard, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was brutal. I only do it once. <laughs> it's a good experience. Because he was already saying, being from Toronto, that my brother wants to be a truck driver in Edmonton. And I was like, oh, we well, can drive trucks in Toronto, you know, because Edmonton is really freezing. And it's true, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's uh, the harsh places. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. The days were really long. The sun would set around yeah. 12.30 at night and rise at 5.30 in the morning. Alaska's really Canada. Pretty much. That's me. <laughs> If, it's in, the last in, in frontier. In a way. <laughs> in a, but that is true in a way. That is true in a way. It's, it's, I think it's not very, it's not as American as in other places. So now you're just connecting. Just yeah, just connecting up, taking, taking out. Uh, Sorry, I just used to be Russian. Any imperfection or yes. any strays? It's, it's only like 230 miles away, right? Yeah. Or it's still like, Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I mean, taking it out right now. Just going in, connecting up, taking some heaviness out here and there, refining. That's what we like to spend time on. When I do my first sketch, you know, basically cut in, I talk in between. You know, I just chat and tell things. But if you count that down, it can be done in about eight to ten minutes. So on a time-wise, how much does your haircut normally take? I'm slow. I'm like about four to five minutes to maybe an hour, depending on the haircut. Um, if I have a good day, 30 minutes maybe. Neighbors can do it in 30 and still be comfortable. If he has to do it in 20, it will get annoying for him. It will take the fun out. But we, on the other side, we say four to five minutes to be able to get some good, uh, yeah, because we want to do detail. Oh. And we ask, Big argument over it. Well, we asked really 35 euros like for, uh, for a haircut. Holy smokes. So, but if you if you uh, calculate down to uh, minute, you know, minutes cut and price, there are places where you can get your haircut for 10 euros, but you're in the chair for 10 minutes as well. What we do is we say 35 euros, but you're in the chair for three quarters of an hour. So, price wise, and your hair will look better for longer as well. Yeah. So that's kind of where we where we get that time. They used to have a queen there. I'm not sure there was like a small controversy. No, as a, there is value. Did you guys finish with any, like, is it like a neck massage or anything like that? Not really. Yeah. Most of the guys are like, neck what? You don't know, as in they no, it's just, uh, not really there. We do that. Uh, what, I will do is, what I will do after the, um, after I've done the shape, I will massage the face a bit with the yes. bomb, you know, if I and get then, some aftershave bomb. And then finally we made it a state. You, know, those, you guys use those big hand so, ones that that what you use? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not like a long massage. I mean, maybe it's a minute. That's all from America. But from like... I will, I will massage the aftershave in the neck a little bit. From like the end of the haircut, it's another 10 minutes bef before they're out of my chair, probably. Before they've paid and they're on their way. 
from like shaving around the edges and after shave and a little massage. And we do a hot towel as well, so. After we've done it's too that, much. I'd rather do <laughs> the yes. last point, which is contouring or framing. Now, Rob is probably going to tell this same anecdote tomorrow as well, but we always tell it today too, because you know, fuck it. Um, is that we compare a contour to a nice frame. So, for instance, let's say you go out, you like art, and you buy a really beautiful oil painting, your favorite artist. When you get home, what are you going to do? Are you going to staple it to the wall, duct tape, you know, maybe the guy's duct tape, but you know, you're not going to do that, no. You're going to run a really, really big, gaudy, you know, kitsch, fuck off gold frame with all the twirls and everything, and you're going to hang it in the gold frame. Correct? I mean, that's what you're going to do. The same thing. Make sure the framing's nice. And you know what the funny thing is, when it comes to people who are not from your field of work, so just, you know, people who don't do hairdressing or barbering at all, the first thing they will look at, like parents and home, your girlfriend, whatever, they will look at the contours. If your contours are messed up, they say, oh, it's messed up haircut. I mean, your haircut can, well, it should look like shit, but as in your haircut can look not as okay, and you do a tight contour and everything, it's fine. And you taper all the necklines anyway, correct? You don't do a square around. Always. We have a t-shirt. You see the t-shirt with the little kid writing on the uh, blackboard over there? In the, in the window it says, I will never block a neckline. <laughs> we don't do that here. If we see any of you doing that, you are obliged or we will force you to buy a t-shirt for everybody here. It's 20 euros a piece. <laughs> times 8 people. No, I, I it's an investment. Weird, but, uh, to do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because look, it's the same thing when you walk in that line. I think it will never look good, but that's me. But if you taper it and like bring in the neck smaller, you know, you, you go into your hairline. Of course, if you if you make a nice clean line with your uh, with the liner, with the detailer, and then do and then uh, raise it all the way. Of course, you're gonna have a really nice clean line, you know, here. But then again, the next day. Gonna look awful. And now it grows back, so to buy a speck and only taking those two hairs away, it will look good for a longer time. And then by fading that net down, even with a longer trim, when you see it on the red poster, all the way on the bottom on the, uh, on the right, it's a, a small photo next to the bald guy. It's a longer trim, but even the neck is tapered all the way down. Why? It will grow out more natural. You know, and that's the same thing with the hard part. We have like with the a scumbag boogie on the blue poster in the middle on the right. There's the hard part, you know, it's shaving in. I don't do that anymore. Maybe with a kid when he asks for it, but not with a grown guy, you know. And of course, there are always exceptions with everything you do, but that's gonna be one in a, I don't know, in a, in a thousand, you know, with a guy with a really thin hair, and then when you just add a little bit with the blade, you will see it more. But when it grows out, his hair is so thin and it don't grow out like that, you know, and that's what happens. And then especially with the guys with a lot of hair, you know, with his, if he wants to have a pompadour next time, and you shave that in, it will take at least six to eight months before you don't see that anymore. And now, you can switch really easy between haircuts as well. Of course, he has one shorter side, but six, give it six weeks, it's long enough to do a pompadour again. Shave hair lines are really popular right now, right now, from the early 20s. Guys, uh, yeah, but, they but they didn't do that back in the day. You can make it. You can make it just look natural. If you if you respect, well, if, if yeah, you look at it, and then it'll be like wider, <laughs> and I'll be like, that's gonna grow out. Yeah, but that's that, that, oh, oh, oh. that's not what they did uh, back then. You know, it's like yeah, that, uh, what I forgot about that movie. The movie with the Moonshine? no, with that bad guy, the bad cop. Um, with, with the parting in the middle. Yeah, that was with, uh, what's his name again? Uh, it's a cool movie. Very good. No, it's about Moonshiners, and it's with uh, and it's, it's, so Tom Hardy. Is it the Tom Hardy, Hardy movie with, with Shia LaBeouf? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm talking about. Uh, what's the film again? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> Russia. No, but yeah, like the middle part is like this white. Yeah. And we think, because he has a lot of hair, that something went wrong. 
uh, with the you know with the with the haircut and then they made it wider and wider. But then again, it looks really badass. But yeah, it's this white. Look, within a half a day, especially with dark hair, he already has that five o'clock shade in there. You know, it doesn't. It looks terrible. And every time you have to get the the right hair, the same hairs, will never work. So it will get wider and wider over time. And then he goes to one other barber that does, does, does even oh more. Okay, and then you're. You know, that's the same thing with people coming in like a pineapple, you know, with the rounded and then with the disconnection. Mm -hmm. Look, I don't find that a haircut. Not, a, not the haircuts we do. That's, that's, you can, you can do anything you like, you know, don't get me wrong. As a hairdresser, I shave the front, the waist, something like that. But as a barber, I try to keep it classic and I keep it in mind that it has to look good. Not only the day he walks out, but over the next five, six weeks. And it has to be easy to do by himself. Mm -hmm. And I just like to respect the, the rules of, of the barbering that's been there already for, uh, you know, centuries. Do you find it, oftentimes you just have to explain it and they'll be like, oh yeah. Yeah, of course. That's how it works. Uh, you know, and that's with everything. Uh, sometimes, you, sometimes people say something to you and you're like, yeah, it's so normal. It would be, you know, it's so obvious, but I never thought about it. And then when you explain it to somebody, or somebody explains something to me, I'm like, hey man, that makes sense. I'm gonna try that as well. And then sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you make it your own, part of your own uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we try to do, is that after three days, you're here like, hey man, you know, I picked a few things up. You know, I will take some uh, with me back home. Some of them I will forget about. Some, something I will uh, implement with my own uh, hair cutting. Uh, that's what we want, you know, it's the little things that can make a big difference in the end for yourself. And then after three days on Friday, you're like, hey man, is that the only thing you do over here? <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. You know, it's not rocket science, but it's, it's our way of doing it. And, and I think that's how you learn. Because uh, a little thing, just uh, to, to finish my story, is that uh, two months ago, a guy used our grooming, or what is it? Uh, it's our uh, phone. Our beard phone, you know, I always use, you know, if you get a guy with a haircut and a beard, yeah, I like to do a beard demo or whatever, but I always let everybody finish the haircuts because that will take extra time. Then when I'm finished teaching, I'll get the guy and do the beard with everybody around it. And then I was doing the beard, showing the beard. And one guy told me like, hey man, you have that beard foam of yours, you know, I love that. But you know what I do? I use it before I'm starting to work on the beard and shaping it up. And I was like, I always fi finish with it, you know, as a finishing product. And I was like, hey man, that makes sense. I put it in, you know, you could shape it a little bit more up already. Because you do a lot of freehand, you know. And then, in the end, it's like going with a, with a hot blade through butter, you know. It, it works so good instead of like going in with the clipper in the dry hair. Never thought about it using, instead, look, with the hair we use in the grooming tonic before we blow dry, so we kind of still. But with a beard, never, you could use a little bit of grooming as well, and then cut it, you know, it will make it easy. Yeah. And it will make it stay, it works even better. But I didn't think about it, I told Rob the next day, because it was on a Wednesday, and then Rob, and Rob was even like, hey man, fuck, I never thought about it. 28 years. <laughs> Yeah, and we follow a lot of people, never thought about it. So that's how you learn. Never think you're there. If you think you're there, you don't, you, you can't learn anything, then you find something else to do in life. Yes, I'm sorry, I lost the trick of what you were saying. Uh, what, what, what was it, what was a good idea uh, with the beard? Is that instead of like the, 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 the product we use to style the beard afterwards, mm -hmm. We use the product already before we start ah, shaping it up. And then it worked really good. It's like a hot knife through butter. Ah, yeah. And there's a small thing. There is also this small thing that water, when the hair is wet, it's more elastic. Yeah, has, uh, there's a scientific thing that has like 25% more elasticity in the hair. If you wet the hair and you shave past it, to make it short, sometimes you catch a wet hair and you'll take the hair out and fuck up your line. So do it in the dry hair. Because it will sit in place as it is and you just take out the hairs you don't want. And it will leave the skin more relaxed. Yeah, it's how the powder calms the skin. And I always use only the blade in front of the ears, around the ears, into the neck, and then like in the bottom part, like this part, 
We have a square of foot, we taper it all the way down, and I taper it all the way down with a lighter, but I don't use the blade. Why? Because a lot of times you go against the grain, or even when you go with the grain, it goes that short that when it goes low, you have that ingrown hair. So a lot of, because the skin is so soft, so a lot of time when you do the blade over here, the next day you will have irritated skin. So it's, yeah, it is smoother for half a day, but maybe like 80% of the time you will have irritated skin that lasts a week. So it doesn't make sense to use it. Can you switch hands? No, not with the oh, okay. No, only but with the so, uh, clipper. Yeah, that, that is. <laughs> no, I'm pretty left-handed, but just to so, uh, Every time I'm you way behind. So smart, time I have to say, you have to say, you have to say, you have to Green Rizzo will take one. Fuck! So, <laughs> Fuck, yeah. Yeah? Three, two, one. Okay. And we're live. <laughs> so Duncan, what are you doing? Uh, shit, what am I doing? I'm going to use some green rosal, my favorite. So uh, I'm going to explain to you. I know. Yeah, on, on this guy right here. Uh, this unlucky son of a bitch. So mm -hmm. now, um, so what I'm going to do... He's is there a while, guys. In the golden frame, golden boy. When I was young. It's a golden When I was young, six years ago. <laughs> six years ago, there we go. So now, I'm going to do a little bit of background on the idea behind pomade and rosal and everything. Now, Pomade as a product, for as far as I know, was invented in France. Yeah? And what they used to do, they used to take pig fat and mix it with apple puree. Why? If you take animal fat on its own, it smells really bad. And you put it in your hair, it smells awful. So they put apples in, mix it up, and you put that in your hair, it smells nice. Now, green, uh, green rosal is sort of a throwback and a sort of an homage to that by having it smelling like apples, it being a grease based product as well. This, of course, is the more modern uh, sort of variant of this because this has more petroleum in there and everything, which, of course, we sort of discovered with the whole industrial revolution, and then animal fat became obsolete. But before that, that's what the French did. They would grab their animal fats, depending on what kind of money you have, it could be bear fats, pig fat, and they would mix it up with apples, and that's where it comes from. So the pom in pomade is for apple, and the aid, for as far as I know, is from the lemonade thing because you're mixing it up. And there you go. So this is a little bit of a throwback to that product. Also my favorite to use because it has a nice shine, good medium hold, nice and sticky. And I'm going to cake his hair with it as well. So uh, <laughs> cake away. Yeah? Don't shit ah, so much. I use double for my hair, so don't be afraid. How much do you use? That's what you do. For a week. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and this is nothing, yeah? No, but honestly, for my, like hair, for my hair, I'll use double the amount of this. Look at those faces, guys. Yeah, everybody's spread out. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, that's what we use. Yeah. Oh, greasing, nice. greasing is a lifestyle. We'll get used to it. Rub it out. Make sure it's nice and oily on the hands. Take it to my fingers as well. Take away all the looks and everything. Make sure it's nice and oily. We do not warm it up in a tin itself. You will separate the ingredients and it will mess up the pie. So rub it out in your hands. See, nice greasy finish, nice shiny finish. And the first thing I'm going to do with my fingers is set in that side parting again, like I did with the grooming tonic. Let's get that in first. So that that is set and I can get that in and respect that area. Go through again. Now I'm going to massage it into the roots first. Ah, look, look at the sure. guy, he's enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a rough I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really going to work it through, spread it throughout the hair, all the long hairs at first. Make sure we get most of the product on there. Pull it all through. Now that I have a very slight, sort of filmy layer on my hands, so I'm going to use it on the sides just a little bit, but not too much. Yeah? Why? Because I want to get the product everywhere. Yeah? Not just in the top, in the front, but in the back, on the sides, around the parting, make sure it's all. I don't want to something about Mary moment. Hmm? Have you seen that movie? Something about Mary? Uh, yeah, you don't want to have that, yeah? <laughs> yeah. That was, I'm trying to, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Is that gel? Threw it in her hair and stick it up. 
What, what, was that lube or was it something yeah, else? He was trying to rub one out before his date. I thought you rubbed one out already. Oh no, he didn't try. He did. Was he didn't try. He did. Was it? <laughs> I think it was more protein based. <laughs> nice. So I'm going to comb this all through properly. As you can see, as I said before, I'm going to style this forward ever so slightly, yeah? Just now I'm going to leave that natural. Really, really yes. yes. Just for fun? No, it's, it's natural. Well, it is natural. We do not shave away this front area, so it's just all... Oh, what do you mean? Yeah, do we mean this angle here? Or, or no, this yeah, we can comb that to the back. You can push that back. I don't want to take it away, because it will jump out. You know, you get these short hairs. You don't want to keep that as natural as possible. So, I'm going to comb it all through. First. I would comb that to the back. Depends on uh, on how you wear it, but never shave it. No. So, now we have... Uh, for a less desirable plant than the haircut, but still, this is what I do. I split it down from the side by just comb it all down, and then I'm gonna pick it back up, go, go against that way that it wants to fall, first vertically, then slightly diagonally, and then horizontally to the back as much as possible. And that's where I'm gonna work with my hands to make sure that it sits nicely into position. There's no drama on top. Go with the crown area. Make sure that it flows through. Check it from the front real quick. Real quick. Shave that up just a little more. Get that wave in. Ladies love the waves. I love the waves as well. You yeah. wish you had waves. No, we just get that waving a little bit. Those are little We're treasures. Waving. <laughs> We're waving. Everybody's waving. It's like bye bye Nailers. Bye bye Nailers. We're going. Bye guys. <laughs> Do the wave. So guys, that's a little bit it. I will post some photos of the end result. And the old school is out. And as you can see, we do spend a bit of time on grooming because we want to get that nicely groomed haircut, make sure it sits nice.